I gotta help with the chicken coop. Hold on. And your foot is stuck. <laughs> there you go, guys. Lucky charms for breakfast. And a peach. And a piece of bread. And what else? Peppers! Oh, those, uh, those peppers. Mmm, tasty. Nathan with Wanninger Farms here. Starting our, well, in the middle of our second cutting of hay. Uh, we got some stuff on the ground out here. Old Jack's out there. For, uh, this field's got some clover in it, so we uh, are flipping it over so the clover dries on the other side, and we'll be baling this tomorrow. So normally, Normally we just let it sit so that way it doesn't bleach it, but this stuff, we had a lot of rain lately, but uh, it was dry from beforehand. And so we, uh, it, it was it was drying quick even with all the humidity and stuff like that. So here's, uh, there's what it looked like before and it was just kind of, I don't know. Bottom side was a little more wet than I wanted to try to get it bailed tomorrow in the worst case scenario Sunday and so we're just we're flipping it into single rows up around there flipping it into single rows over there and then uh, tomorrow morning once the uh, dew burns off we'll bring the big V rake in here and we'll just pull pull a couple rows together and that'll that'll get it ready to go for tomorrow afternoon and then planning on Planning on doing small bales in this field here. Um, this one, and then that one, and maybe there's another big hay field over there. Hopefully, we, then it's supposed to rain on Monday, and hopefully it'll take off and get some good growth before any foxtail can take off in here, because right now, there's not any foxtail in this field. But, you say that, and then it gets dry, and all of a sudden, poof, foxtail shows up. But, we, uh, if that happens, then we'll just cut it a little sooner than normal before it heads out, so that way we can uh, still make little bales out of it. So we will see what happens. So yeah, we, uh, Jack's gonna go out here and finish this. I'm gonna go over and check on, we got one field of straw that they're finishing up today. Make sure that's, should be good to go by now, but uh, make sure that's good for them to go, and then they'll bring the baler over here tonight, and we'll probably, um, probably run a few rows around um, on this field here just to kind of see what our moisture is because that clover really kind of messes with your head when you're trying to figure out how dry it is because those stalks can hold a lot of moisture whereas the grass is already I mean the grass is probably 12% right now but that clover stuff's probably still low to mid 20s we're trying to get her figured out one way or another it'll get bailed um, and um, yeah nice nice thing is a tool in our toolbox is we have cows so if it's gonna if it's gonna rain we can always get it round bailed or bring the big square baler over here and then wrap it wet and uh, cows love it better feed quality stuff like that so it's just a lots of options just, just go with your gut make a decision get it done just don't second guess yourself too much because you'll always second guess yourself.
Yep. Yep. So Nathan and his brother were just separating out um, some calves that are just kind of in line to go to the butcher. So they set out a tin. Two of them will be going to the butcher tomorrow and the rest will be going over to the cattle barn on the back of the building so that we can feed them a little differently and get them finished out and ready to go to the butcher. So we're moving them from the feedlot to the barn. Hi. Hi. I also stepped in a big pile of manure so I had to go clean off my shoe. <laughs> Hi. So I try to hurry home to, cause it's like after eight o'clock, I'm trying to hurry up and get <laughs> shots. Anybody else have a dog that gets into their garbage? Uh, I wanna take you on a little garden tour and then you get to experience one of my huge 2020 major garden mistakes. Cause I've never planted this particular crop before and I'm learning new things every year. <laughs> I'm gonna start on this side and I'll work my way over. But you'll also see those big trees along the edges over there. And the only reason why I didn't cut them back more is because um, some of them are black raspberries, some of them are mulberries. They're just, I like picking berries off of them sometimes. Some of them are weeds, but okay. I've got beans. This is supposed to be green beans, but it never grew up. <laughs> Some things are just still working on growing, especially my weeds. These are all squash here, and I've harvested quite a few. My tomatoes, these are cherry on this side, and these are aromas. Oop, we have one down there. So my goal is to get them to trellis those buckets right there. This is how we grow our potatoes. So they're easy to harvest. So I've been mounding dirt for every week for a few months. And then what we'll do is we'll spread out a tarp and dump all them all out. And that's how I harvest my potatoes. Onto the herbs, sage, rosemary, parsley, basil, pepper plants, jalapenos, regular peppers, I attempted bucket plants this year. Didn't work out so well. My corn, which is looking kind of sad. My corn does fantastic when there is corn planted in that field, but when there isn't, it looks kind of puny. Over here was, I have harvested lettuce there earlier, and then the rabbits have mutilated my broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. And then what's left of a couple of heads of cabbage. <laughs> I think I have one token onion over there too, but it's a, it's a learning experience all the way around. So my garden this year was a little bit bigger than normal, but uh, it was also a lot of firsts. So I learned a lot of lessons and I'm about to bring you along for one of my biggest lessons that I learned. And it's the first year I've ever planted carrots. Uh, and so I will pick my carrots and I will show you the lessons that I learned. It's, uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. So are you ready for the lesson? <sighs> so carrots like these show me that it is time to pull my carrots because look how thick they are. It's as big as a nickel. Um, like I've got others that are oh, good follower, like this long. Okay, but the problem was lesson learned. I didn't thin out my carrots. See, they're good size. I didn't thin them out. And the other situation is I literally planted them into the ground, like ground, ground. I didn't mix anything with them. 
and I didn't mound them either. And a lot of times with root vegetables, you mound them. You mound them so that they're easier to harvest because you want them in looser dirt. Like my potatoes, I put them in a bucket and I harvest them by dumping the bucket out. So I'll have to see if I can find a picture or I'm planning on harvesting the rest of these tonight. So if I find one, I'll, I'll make sure to show you a really good picture of them. But it looks like they're hugging. They're, they're very lovable carrots because they're roots that grow straight down and then they start weaving around each other and then they start hugging each other. So it's sweet, sweet carrots, but disastrous when you're trying to cook them and eat them and peel them and harder to clean, a lot harder to clean. So I'll see what I can find. Can't see me, but it's like 10 till nine. I just finished the carrots. I wasn't planning on finishing the carrots, but I did anyway, because rumor has it, it's gonna rain tonight. And so I wanted to get them all out so that the rain could help me clean them off because they are so hard to clean. Carrot harvest 2020 complete on June 29th. <laughs> they look so terrible. I think I'm gonna stick to squash. <laughs> Good morning. I have to be careful this morning because there's a naked baby playing in a pool in the rain. Oh, are you okay? Let me show you my carrots. They look fairly normal from here. They, uh, I'm letting the rain hopefully wash off some of the dirt. But I'll uh, get up close to some so you can see how mutant carrot they are. You ready? I feel like I should put googly eyes on them. <laughs> oh, here's hugging ones. Oh, they love each other. Beautiful. They also broke off really easily because the dirt was so hard. But the carrots can still be used. I just don't like to use them because they're harder to clean. And uh, so I'll probably just roast them. Maybe roast them enough that I can squish them down, but yeah. Just bringing you out here to uh, our Teff grass field. It's uh, ready to go. We, uh, we've had a little bit of a learning curve on this field, um, getting it ready to go and stuff like that. We uh, planted a little light and there was rain coming so we didn't get everything rolled the way we wanted to and so the stand to take off and then it didn't rain for like a month and so it just didn't come in real great and the weeds kind of got in there so about two three weeks ago we came in here with a we uh we used to do a bunch of commercial mowing so we have a big 16 foot grounds master mower and we mowed this whole property um just mowed it down and then ran over everything just overseeded it and then ran the roller back over it and it took off i mean this stuff is uh, most of this stuff is about a mid thigh right now so we are trying to get out here trying to get out here now and uh get this get this down get it mowed and let's uh see if we can get another cutting maybe two off of it that'd be great but yeah so hopefully hopefully tomorrow i mean if you guys can see we got rain in the area today um and so it should be getting out of here and it's starting to sprinkle now so i might have to hop in the truck but um hopefully tomorrow we'll get this down and then we're going on vacation for the weekend so we'll let it set for two days and we'll be back monday morning and we'll be able to hopefully just rake it up and get it bailed um there's just now we were dry for a month and a half and then now all of a sudden it's in the middle of today is july 30th and uh now we're just getting rain every three days kind of a thing. This field's 142 acres and it goes kind of over right about there and then heads north and goes down over that way. Comes around the house, goes up over the hill over there. And so it's a nice stand. There's definitely some weeds that we need to take care of. Hopefully tomorrow it'll be dry enough that we can uh, 
get out here and start mowing. Next is storage. Figuring out where we're going to store all this stuff. So if we have to bale it wet or what we're going to do with it. But we will see. We'd love to do a lot of it into small squares um, if we can. Because I have not had a chance to get any small squares made yet this year. It's all been into big squares. Jake should be out here tomorrow. Assuming this rain kind of calms down. The nice thing is it's pretty breezy out. So hopefully it'll dry out tonight and he can come out here and at least get some of this stuff mowed tomorrow before we leave town. And if we have to, I might call a buddy and have him come out and tet it while we're gone. We'll just kind of see how thick it is once we get into the windrows. But seems like it's going to yield pretty well. It's nice and tall. Picking up nice after the reseeding. So should be good. Thank you.